Hey, good evening, everybody. I see some familiar faces, or at least names, from the last session, and um, I see some new folks joining. So welcome, and I'm going to wait a few more minutes for everybody to get logged in, and we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to mute everybody, but you can still unmute yourself. I just um, want to make sure that we don't have a lot of distracting background. We have a larger group for tonight's session, and I'm certainly excited to see everybody tonight. So um, anyway, we'll give it a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. Meanwhile, I am going to um, send a little note to everybody so that you and I can um, chat with each other. So give me just a moment and I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so I just said hello. Hopefully you can all see that message and that's going to be a great way for you to communicate with me. I may unmute the lines, generally speaking, but I'd like to um, keep them muted just for the sake of noise, but feel free and unmute yourself if you have a question and then you can mute yourself back up again. So um, again, I'm just going to wait another minute or so as we've still got a few folks joining. And I hope that everyone is also having a great evening tonight. How's everybody doing out there? All right, good. I can see hello and good comments. Everybody's doing well. Everybody also survived um, the hurricane. I don't know about anybody else, but I was flying all day that day and I was glued to my little cell phone flying across the country streaming the news with Hurricane Irma and thinking about all the people and the friends that I know who are dealing with it and um, certainly a lot of people went through a lot of awful conditions with that and Houston folks in that whole region as well so um, just quite an amazing weather situation that we've had and I've certainly been empathizing with them so much so um, we've got a few more people joining. So welcome. Hey, I see some friendly faces, or at least the the, uh, the names. I can't actually see your face, so don't worry. You can sit with your pajamas. It's okay with me. Um, so I'm going to give a couple more minutes as we're just getting a few more folks on the line. And um, we will get started. I want to say thanks to those of you who submitted images for tonight's session. I'm going to try to get through as many of those as I can while still giving a good critique. I'd rather do few and do better than do a lot of them and rush through it, but I will try to do thoughtfully as many as I can tonight. And as we get started, I want to say one other important thing. Um, many times with people who um, decide to have their first critique done, they get really nervous about it. They feel uncomfortable with it. They're scared of people beating up on them. <laughs> and I see, Don, that you're smiling. Thank you. Um, hey, everybody's doing well. Uh, Joel, good in Michigan. Hey, Joel, good to see you on the line tonight. Um, I'm formerly from Michigan. And uh, Pamela, <laughs> good to see you back. So anyway, and I see a lot of other friendly faces. Samantha, good to see you as well. Um, all of you, I'm seeing lots of wonderful names. Faye, good to see you back. I just had you on the last webinar. Um, so anyhow, um, people are scared to do critiques. I get it. Um, I am always intimidated, right, to, you know, put your work out there. Heck, it doesn't even have to be a critique. It can be posting your picture to Facebook. I have some people in the photography group that I started, uh, the Photography is a Journey group, that, you know, some people have posted, this is the first time I've posted an image. And, you know, it might just be with a cell phone, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but I know that it can be scary to put some things out there. I'm working on an art and photography project that I'll be releasing in the spring and I'm nervous about it. I think it'll be cool and I can't wait to show everybody what I've been working on behind the scenes because uh, it's kind of a level up for me with some very different things, but I'm still nervous about the feedback that I'll get. So I get it. So that's why I say these are friendly photo critiques. I want to help you with what I can help you with. It doesn't mean I have all the answers. It doesn't mean that my opinion has to mean anything to you. So photo critiques, first of all, it is one person's opinion. 
Now, it might be an informed opinion. It might not be an informed opinion, but it's an opinion. At the end of the day, when you hang a picture on the wall, let's say it's, you know, at a restaurant or a coffee shop or in your house or wherever, Facebook, people are going to have opinions on it. I don't care if you're, you know, quote unquote, one of the best photographers in the world or you're brand new with your cell phone. There are things that uh, might be wonderful about that image. There are things that other people might not like, no matter how well you do it. Think of the fanciest restaurants in the country. Some people still don't like what they prepare. They might charge a hundred bucks a plate for it. So this is an opinion. And I never want people to feel bad about my opinion that I have for something. Hopefully some things will be helpful, both pointing out the things you do really well or the things that if it were my personal picture, I might try to do differently or enhance. And we may have some other folks share their opinion on here as well. But I want this to be a really safe place for you to submit your work and get feedback from me and potentially other people and to never feel bad about it. As a photographer, I personally have had my images critiqued numerous times, including most recently at the photographer, the Professional Photographers Association International Photo Competition. I submitted four images uh, in the competition, and also you can pay extra and get the critique done for those. And I still am learning things based upon what other people say. These are very skilled photographers from around the world that critique the images. Sometimes I agree with what they say, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes, I mean, I've had sometimes where they're like, well, this is a composite image when it wasn't. And I can't say anything because you can't communicate with them. They're just giving you one-way feedback. So please know I still subject myself to feedback and I sometimes agree or disagree. So this is a really safe place. I hope that's enough of an intro to give you an idea of what I'm going to do. But please do not lay any of this. Make or break you one way or the other. It's one person's opinion. But I'm happy to share it with you. And I'm doing it for free uh, to hopefully help you in your journey as photographers. So welcome to those who came. I've got someone who just joined us. So welcome, Diane. Thanks for joining us as well. And I am recording this session so I can share it with you after the fact. If any of you have to leave early. And I know there's sometimes people who read register and then something comes up. So um, I'm glad for everybody that's here and I hope this is going to be a helpful thing for you. So anyway, now that we've got that out of the way, the rest of the time I'm going to be spending in, not in Google, in Photoshop. So um, I've pulled everybody's images up and I'm just going to go um, in the order that they show up for me and start talking about some things. I highly encourage you to also chat your comments or thoughts and if individually you'd like to unmute yourself using that little tool that you have please go ahead and unmute yourself uh, if you have something to say otherwise i'm leaving it in mute mode because we've got dogs and cats and families and doorbells and cell phones and tvs and all that it gets nuts so anyway without further ado i'm going to get started so the first image that was submitted and by the way as i'm submit, you know, talking about your image. If you want to unmute yourself and we can have a conversation, that's great. If you can't figure out how to do it, let me know and I will unmute you and then um, we can talk. So this first image, um, and, and, you know, again, um, the whole, the feedback is open to everybody, but I'm going to talk personally with the person who submitted it. So is the person who submitted it on the line? Yes, it's mine, Faye. Okay. Hey, Faye, thanks for sharing so much. Um, did you take this when you were at my hummingbird workshop, by the way? Yes, in, that, <laughs> in, the, in the, the white box. Yeah. Whatever. yeah, I was trying to work with that. I wasn't sure what I was doing. <laughs> oh, okay, got it, got it. So um, at, I, I teach a hummingbird photography workshop, and um, during that time, we're photographing hummingbirds. We're also photographing flowers and hummingbirds, and sometimes just flowers, and I had a white backdrop. So that we could do some uh, potentially compositing later. So Faye shot this just with the white backdrop, but I like that you shot it just kind of as a floral scene, but using that white backdrop uh, just for some fun. So it isn't pure white, but it's, it's light, light, light white or cream. Um, you know, Lisa actually was in that white um, tent light thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where so I, I had, had the lights on the side. Yes. Okay. That's why. So I also had a product photography box, which is a maybe 
three, I'm going to ballpark the size, two and a half to three foot by two and a half to three foot cube that is made of white nylon. And you put lights on the outside of it pointing in and you can get some directional soft light. People usually do that to sell stuff on eBay and this or that, but Faye put some flowers in there. Um, so anyway, um, thanks for sharing that background with that. So right off the bat, and Faye, you were in my um, session this morning, or excuse me, earlier tonight, <laughs> and I was, it's been a long day, I've been traveling this week, I'm jet lagged apparently. Um, this uh, particular uh, session that I gave earlier tonight was on composition, and one of the things that I talked about were the rule of thirds. And so one thing that I like about this, Faye, and I'm using my crop tool in Photoshop to illustrate it, um, not that I'm going to crop it, but it puts the rule of thirds in there. So if you can see that rule of thirds, and you're, you're looking at this, everybody, she did a really nice job of putting, whoops, hold on, there we go, of putting the most important part of that image, the largest flower in this case, right up in what we call the PowerPoint, which is where these grid lines, it's like a tic-tac-toe grid on your image, intersect. That intersection, which is here, 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 or here, but she chose this one to put that most important flower in it, and I like that choice. I also really like the choice that there's no distracting elements in the background. It's really clean and clear. And then you've got the other lines, uh, you know, from the stems and the other flowers. I really like threes in images, so think of composition, think of um, putting odd numbers together often, though not always, but often work really well together. I like this, these three here. This other one over here on the right hand side is kind of muddled by some other branches or stems of something and um, probably some cedar or something that was up there, I'm guessing. Uh, we were up in the mountains and I think and, and you, this may require some Photoshop or maybe there's an alternate image too. I almost think this part of the image works better. I'm gonna recompose it a little bit here and recrop it. I think that part works better as three, personally for me, just as a thought, than having the fourth one over here. Primarily because I think it gets a little cluttered with this here. And if you were to play with it some more, you could get rid of some of this. You know, normally I'd say if it's a little bit, you might be able to get rid of it in Photoshop, but it's really hard to do that in this particular point here. So um, I would think of that as a, as a crop and an option. You might have to clean it up a little bit in Photoshop. Or if you were to go back and do it again, pull some of those things away and keep it a little cleaner. That's just my thought. Um, as one thought for the composition. What I do like though, other than that piece, is that your flower is tacked sharp where it needs to be. Um, the lighting is, is soft. There's no hot spots or you know things where the flower reflected to the point that it's bright, right, white. You don't have any areas of contrast that are so dark that it's distracting. But I think some of these distract me, like I get tangled up in it, my eye, like I want to follow this line up and see this flower, but I get stuck here. And I kind of want to follow this flower, but I get a little stuck here. Um, and so I think pulling that away might have given you a little bit of a cleaner image, but that's just my two cents on it. Um, what are you, what are your thoughts, Faye? And, you know, what do you want to well, say? I, about thought, that? I thought that exact same thing. Um, but I was just wondering with your expertise in Photoshop, if there was anything besides cropping it uh, that I could. Yeah. Um, so a couple of thoughts and, you know, and it might take more time that we have tonight, but I, could go into my crop tool and this is uh, or not crop clone tool and by the way this is not a Photoshop class tonight so I can't go into great detail on how to do all these things but you could clone you know some of these things out to get the distractions and I'm just doing it really quickly and probably not perfectly you know that will help to a point um, it will get trickier to do and you could use healing brush as well, but clone tends to work better for these things. It will get trickier to do when you get down in this part of the flower. Um, another thought would be is to consider a composite. So I like certain things about this flower and some of these, but maybe there's a sister image somewhere that doesn't have as much clutter. You could stick the other flower in there. Or if you wanted to get rid of the flower but not have such a tight crop, and, and again, this is going to be a sloppy job on this just because of my time today. But you could go in and totally get rid of this other flower. And I would probably do it with a little bit of a sharper tool here at the moment. 
Um, but get rid of this. It's going to be time consuming to do well. This part won't be hard. You know, you get rid of that. But getting in here and having that look natural without looking at like you just cloned it out is going to take some time and some work because you're going to want to get into these individual petals and get into these edges and really work it. You might have to take pieces and parts from other part of the flower and kind of bring them in here so it doesn't look like you just cut it off. You might have to soften the edges so it looks like the natural blur that you already have here. So you may be needing to use some blur tools to do that and a variety of other things. So it's going to take some time and that's uh, not a very good job of it here. I'd want to work on this for a while and really make it look right. I might even have to borrow from like petals over here and replace some over here to make it look right. Um, it would take some work, but you could do some of that in Photoshop as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, my dear. Thank you. Um, okay, so this next one, and uh, let me just make, oh, we got two people that need to come in. There we go. Um, so this next image, and by the way, I know we had a couple people join in late. I am recording this, so if you missed it, um, the first part of it, I already critiqued one image. I will send out the recording to everybody who, who registered, and you'll be able to watch that part again. So welcome to those who just joined us. So anyway, um, this next image, is the person on the line who shot it? Yes, that's me. Suzanne. Hey, hey, Suzanne, how are you? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I'm Hi, doing Faye. really well. <laughs> hey, Faye, it, you remember Suzanne? Suzanne took my hummingbird photography uh, workshop as well with you just last month. So um, welcome, Suzanne. So um, I know uh, Suzanne as well. Suzanne is a wonderful pet portraiture person. So she's a pet sitter and she does pet portraits while she's pet sitting. So you get a twofer and she does an amazing job of both. So anyway, um, Suzanne, thanks for sharing this great image of this, uh, this wonderful old black lab. And I can see his little, his gray hairs on his muzzle and he's just adorable. <laughs> and I'm also happy to see as a pet tag. Um, I always love it when people tag their pets because when I find them outside, I want to make sure that it's their owner. So sidebar, but I like that. So first impressions on this, I am drawn instantly into his eyes, which I love. Um, he has got just the sweetest eyes and this, um, I don't know if contrast is the right word, but color contrast between the, the bright eyes and then these wonderful, like, the bones of his eyes and his face like there's just a lot of texture and things going on here he's a wet dog so he's got extra reflective fur plus he's an older dog and you've so the reason why i like this is it's very challenging as you probably know suzanne um, <laughs> unless you have a gray day to photograph a wet animal that's dark it is so reflective and so contrasty it can just be a complete challenge and so I can appreciate that you did that and still got definition and things in here um, I also love that you got some definition in the ears here because all of that stuff can just end up being a mush so in your photograph like I photograph bears if I photograph a black bear on a sunny day especially one that's been in the water oh my gosh it's impossible to get the right contrast and, and to be able to see detail so you did that here and, and I like that so one thing that I'm thinking of here um, is that I've got um, got a little bit of maybe too much brightness right here. It's looking like there might not be detail here. And um, is someone, um, let me see if, I might have to mute everybody. And then Suzanne, can you unmute your, oh, I'll unmute you. There we go. Um, I can hear you, but I can hear some other people talking. So I just muted everybody else. You can still talk though, right, Suzanne? Or no. Um, oh, hold on. I'll unmute you. Ah, there I am. There you go. Okay, sorry about that. I just, somebody else had unmuted themselves and it was getting a little noisy. So, um, so anyway, one thing that I'm thinking on this particular image that would uh, make it pop some more, and then I want to talk about some other things I really like about it, is this area, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but this area right in here is pretty bright. I, and I lost your mouse. Oh, okay. Let me see. Um, what else can I use? How about there? There, there I go. There I can see it. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, on that particular image, 
I'm seeing, and, and I think too, you've sent me a lower resolution image, which could partly contribute to that. And that's fine that you did. I don't mind that you did that. Um, but you're seeing a little bit of pixelation. But what I'm really interested in here, I'm going to grab my dropper tool. And this dropper tool, if I click on something in here, will tell me exactly what color it is. So if I click right here, see how it goes up to 100% pure white? Mm -hmm. FFF, FFF is the hexadecimal code for pure white. And if I click on that, we're at it or really, really close to it up there. Mm -hmm. And that means that there's no more detail left in there. And so what you might try to do, and I can always help you outside of this, I know we've been doing some private Photoshop stuff, is try to pull down a little bit on some of the highlights here. Not so much that it makes it look awful, but if there are still data there to do that with, and shooting in RAW will help with that, I think you've been shooting in RAW and JPEG, we can probably pull this down a little bit so it looks a little better. Even if I went to try to pull the highlights down, if it is truly overexposed, and I suspect it might not be, I suspect this is a processed version and we can pull it back. I would pull the highlights back on him a little bit, but even if I did that all the way, you can see the image change when I pull down mm -hmm. highlights. It doesn't yeah. change it here, and that's because there's no more data left. So I okay. think that could be something that could be corrected probably in your original image most yes. likely, but I agree with your choice of making some of that contrast greater and pulling that up. We just might have went over it, you know, it just might be a little too much right. in that case, but I right. like that. I Black dogs are, they are so tricky to photograph <laughs> in the sun, and you're in Arizona where it's always sunny. So the other thing that I really like about this image is, and it was a good choice to put him here. The brown in the wall brings out the brown in the eyes. And blue and brown are a complement of warm and cool tones. And they're opposite on that color wheel, pretty close to that. Kind of orange and blue are opposite. And this is kind of a warm brown color. Those two, putting complementary colors together like that, really works nicely for, um, for photography and gives you a wonderful feeling than if this was just solid blue. Like I really like the blue and the brown. And to me, it's, it's very masculine. You've got this dog and I, I really like it. I also, I'm going to go to the rule of thirds here again. And if you look at the rule of thirds, you can see that in that PowerPoint is the dog and pretty much right where his eyes are. The other thing that I like, and I'm going to try to draw this on here really quickly. Photoshop is not a, um, not necessarily a markup tool, but I'm going to do my best. Um, if I took uh, my brush and let me pick a bright color so you can see it. How about red? And I'm going to go at 100% opacity so you can see all of this. Um, if I took this and I'm looking at some angles, and you can even twist your camera and do it a little more, but I have somewhat of an angle with the direction of these eyes. It's not perfectly straight across. It's a little bit at an angle. And I think you could even exaggerate that a little more or capture that dog with a head tilt of just a skosh more. But you do still have some diagonal lines here. These serve as leading lines, right? All these cracks in the bricks to take you into the dog. I like all that a lot. Um, and it brings you where I need to be. And you did do that rule of thirds and get him right in that PowerPoint. And then this over here serves as negative space. So I like that quite a bit with what you did in that image. So that's my thoughts on that, but really well done on getting some contrast in that dog. I think we can just pull down some of the very brightest stuff. And I think you'll be in great shape. All right. And then Suzanne, you submitted a second one face on of this dog and see, this is perfect. So see how much better I'm going to zoom in for everybody. See how this is exposed and you probably played with contrast in post-processing. I suspect it looks like you did, but you did a nice job of it. Um, it's not pure white. So if I took my dropper and I clicked it on these brighter spots, see how that's actually gray. You would never think that that whitest spot of water is actually gray or light blue periwinkle. It's amazing how the eye plays tricks on us, but it's not a hundred percent white. So you've still got detail there. I think this shows off that detail amazingly well for a subject that's really hard to shoot. <laughs> now this tag down here is kind of cute. You know, I like it, but depending on the preference of maybe the person with the picture, you could easily clone that out. It could be distracting. It's also kind of charming, just depends on which way you're thinking about it. Um, the other, like these are really subtle things now because I really enjoy this image a lot. I would go in with clone tool or healing brush, 
this area back here, I like the water, but then I've got this dark spot and my eye kind of stops here, right? There's like a mm -hmm. clear line of demarcation. I would go in and I would just clean that up by grabbing some of my other content. Let me grab my clone tool and, um, and just replicating that a little bit. Whoops, that's not at all what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, hold on here, what did I grab? Um, clone stamp, okay. And then going, that is not at all what I'm doing. Why is this not working? Hold on, I must have something goofy in Photoshop set up there with me a minute. Um, I'll go to healing brush for a minute until I can figure out what I did wrong with the clone tool. Um, you could even do healing brush and get rid of some of that line of demarcation and it'll yeah. smooth it out. And even maybe, whoops, sometimes it grabs the wrong thing. Even maybe somewhere in here. And you could even clone it. I gotta figure out why this clone tool is not um, doing its job here. Um, all right, there we go, a little bit better. Let me soften this up quite a bit. There we go. And you could even do that not at 100%. You could maybe go back to 30 or 40% opacity and grab a selection and then cover over it and it kind of just gets softer without, uh, and I'm just resampling in a variety of different areas. And that will soften that up in the background, get rid of some of those white spots right on the edges because that draws our eye right to that edge. Maybe soften that up in there as well. And you still get the idea that there's water back there, but it's not obvious. Get rid of that little white spot right in there. That'll take it down a little bit. And I think you have a really cool image of this dog. This looks like a great dog. So anyway, makes sense. Any questions on that? No, I, I agree with it. Though. Thank you. And the focus is just wonderful. And all I want to do is sit in here and pet his forehead. I love <laughs> that texture that you got. It's just wonderful. I just like, I want to, it makes me want to reach in and pet him. I just love that. So well done, uh, Suzanne. All right, um, this next image is the person on the line that took this. And I'm not sure if she is or not. Let me see. And I see lots of comments, by the way, in the last few photos. Um, all right, I'm not sure if Catalina is on the line tonight. I'm looking. I don't see her logged in. Something must have come up. So, all right, so I can't, um, I can't help her uh, directly, but I'll talk about her image recently um, that she took and then we'll move forward. So this is um, obviously an image of a fox here and she went in real tight and uh, she used, I'm guessing, a very shallow depth of field with the lens, you know, the aperture setting. So I'm guessing, you know, 2.8, something like that. And or she used a Photoshop technique to blur out the edges and this is cropped in. So one of two things could have happened here. I don't know which approach she took. So what I really like about this image, and a lot of people don't do this very well, is it's really simplifying the image. I don't have ears, I don't have a tail, I don't have a background, a backyard. Those all, not to say that those things are bad, they're not. Sometimes they can be if it gets too cluttered. But she really uncluttered the subject to allow you to really feel just fox, right? In your face fox, and I love that. Um, I love the blurred detail on the edges because it just draws my eye in. Thinking back to the composition webinar that I just did, we talked about your eyes go to the places that are lightest and darkest and also um, what's in focus. We talked about way more than that, but those were a few things. And um, she really did a nice job of bringing me into the eyes here. There is a technique that you can do in Photoshop and I don't know if she did it or not, but it appears like she could have. So, um, but what you would do is go in and create a duplicate layer. I'm doing this very quickly create an overlay layer of it, go in with your paintbrush and white or black. I'm doing this super quick, I know, because this isn't a Photoshop class. This is composite or a, a critique, but you pull up the highlights and things that are in the eye. And I think she may have done that by the way this looks, because it's done beautifully. But you just go in at maybe 5% opacity, brighten up the eyes a little bit, both where the light comes in or reflects in the top of the eye, and the opposite side, you brighten. Now, if, when I do it now, I'm going to overdo it because she's already done something similar, but I'm just showing you how you can get some brightness in that eye. And she seemed to do that. I don't want to do it 
overdone because she's already done a good job of that, but I'm just showing you a quick example. Um, it won't show up much in this one because, again, she's already done it, but that would be how you would pull out some eyes um, if, you know, uh, you need to. So I really like this. I like the contrast around the eyes. I like the nose and these lines that are brighter here than the coat behind it. It just adds some definition so it doesn't all blend together. I, I just really like that image a whole bunch. So um, those are my main thoughts on that one. I don't have a lot negative to say about it. Um, the only thing is it's, and I don't know, this could just be the really shallow depth of field. I would maybe like a little more definition in the fur here. But you know what, it is truly not a big deal to me at all because the whole image kind of has this softer feel. So um, I just really like it a lot. I wish she was here to have uh, had me talk about it. This is another image from uh, the same person, Catalina. This is super cool. Uh, first of all, I can tell Catalina has a really good handle on focus with looking at the just the detail around this bill. Um, it looks like the eye is still in focus, but quickly fades out of focus, whether that was selectively done in post-processing or whether that was the nature of her camera and her focus point, I'm not sure. Um, I might be able to go to file, file info and see the metadata. Uh, let's see here. So she thought this at a thousandth of a second F8 ISO 160 at 300 millimeters. So zooming in at a 300 millimeter lens um, at F8 would usually give me more focus from front to back of this bird. So that's telling me this is probably blurred out a little bit in Photoshop, I think. So if I'm wrong on that, I apologize. I'm just trying to uh, deconstruct this image a little bit. But I love this gull. I think it's a human's gull. And this catch light in the eye is great. The focus looks great. The detail's phenomenal. Not over or underexposed. I like the side light of you can see this side of the bird is bright. It draws my eye here. This part is in shade. I like that. And then whatever the heck this background is plays so well with the bill and the eye and pulling up those orange pieces. And the orange and the blue, again, color harmony here with uh, opposite colors on the color wheel. I don't know what it was behind her city lights or I'm not sure what, but that just so works. Gulls can be very boring subjects at times, um, even though I think they're neat birds. But um, this is just a very nice picture of a gull. So good job on that for her. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to either unmute yourself and make sense. Catalina's not here. If you have any questions or thoughts, or if you want to type something in the chat window, um, feel free and do that. I'll be glad to respond to that. Any questions or thoughts? Okay. All right. I'll keep going. So the next one, I'm going to close out um, some of these. So I have room for the others here. So, give me one second, get rid of those. All right, we're working through these images here, about halfway through. Uh, so this one here, again, the lens that she's using is just capturing the sharpness really, really well. I'm a stickler for tack sharp detail, and this is really, really well done. One thing, several things I really like about this. Um, first of all, the light, I can tell, was probably an overcast day, like a bright overcast day. And so there's not a lot of harsh light in here. It's soft, which a lot of times will make in hummingbirds that gorget flare. If you're not, already, not using flash technique, uh, multiple flash setups for the hummingbird gorgets, um, sometimes they don't flash very well. Um, this one is catching some of that color, and I like it. I also love just the light and how it played on this green. I mean, it's just really done absolutely tack sharp. And I want to point something out that um, even though I'm not seeing it in this image, I do see some people who do this. And I want to point out something with the catch light in the eye. A lot of times, and I'm going to fake something here for a minute. Um, a lot of times when I see people take pictures of wildlife, and the eye of the bird is there, you know, or the animal, whatever it is. They'll take a picture, and if the catch light isn't there, the picture is completely 
black where the eye. So, you know, the eye might look like this, and I'm going to mark over her image just as an example for a minute. We might have an image that looks like that. And if I pull back, do you see how dead that looks? I mean, it almost looks like the bird's missing the eye. But I see a lot of people like, oh, I didn't get the catch light in the eye. Let me go add something. And so what they do is they end up going into their little brush tool and they go, oh, ta-da, there's my white spot. And they're like, okay, now the bird has life, which kind of, yes, but it still looks fake to me. And here's why. I'm going to take away this layer for a minute. And you're going to go in and you see that catch lights very rarely are just a white dot. Sometimes they're a white dot and then they have a, um, they're a white dot and then they also have this extra information here. But usually there is the sky and the ground in the image and it may be very faint. It could be gray and black or, you know, like a translucent gray and black. But you see this curvature here. That's how I can tell that this is a more natural picture than a black bird with a white dot that looks like that. So it's one of those little details. But if I were a judge in a photo contest, I'd be looking and trying to pay close attention to what uh, is going on in those eyes and whether they were faking it or not. So just wanted to bring that out, that most eyes have curvature and are lighter on the top and darker on the bottom. Um, we even saw that in the fox image a minute ago. And that, to me, tells me typically that it's a much more natural eye and somebody hasn't processed it to death. Sharpness is great here. Uh, there's really not a whole lot that I would worry about here. Depending on your feelings about Photoshop, I could potentially play with this background and diffuse it even more, but it's really not bothersome to me at all. Um, I think that uh, it's really nice. I've seen backgrounds that are a lot more busy. Uh, maybe one little thing that I might do is just tone down a little bit of this white area here just so that it's not quite so busy um, and, and, and drawing my attention. Same with some of the area up here. I'm just pulling it down lightly, but whoops, don't want to get the bird in there. Then I could use other, I'm doing clone. I don't have to use clone. I could use some other darkening tools, but um, just a little bit, you can see the difference there. Getting rid of especially this area in the lower left can be helpful. Okay, so those are my thoughts. Um, one last thing, I'm noticing down here at the bottom, we have a tail that's just almost cut off. Um, I don't know if you cropped it or not, Catalina. If you did, um, there's a couple of ways you could bring that back. One way would be um, to go back to that original image and crop it. If you don't mind doing some compositing, there are some other ways you could fix it. One is just simply expand down this area at the bottom. And if you have Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud, and I'm not using Creative Cloud in this particular computer at the moment. I'm in the middle of moving, so everything is kind of um, in a very stopgap <laughs> scenario for me at the moment with boxes all around me. But um, in Creative Cloud, there's going to be a checkbox at the top when you use the crop tool, and you expand the crop beyond the image, and it will say use content aware fill. You want to choose yes. In this case, I don't have that on this machine, but I can easily do it. I can go in here and then select the area, go to edit, and then fill, content aware fill, and I can add some content to the bottom. It will take a look at what I've already done and add more. It's not always perfect like you see down here. And Catalina, I apologize for just modifying your image. I'm only doing it for the sake of example, but I could then go in and kind of retreat these areas and fix them and not have, and I'm doing this very sloppily. Um, I usually do this much slower and with much more care built in. But I could go in and modify this and so that the bird has a little bit more room at the bottom of the page. And I could go in and you know add a layer and take some of the green color in here and just kind of bring that all back in. So I'm sorry that I'm doing this so quickly because right now you know, I've got more images to get through, but I can kind of fix this so it looks like there's more of a tail and I have a little room and I'm not stuck at the bottom of the image. I would still want to play with this more. I don't like that solid green darkness right here. I'd want to kind of merge it in a little bit more with the other stuff. Take my time with it. But you get the idea um, so that it doesn't look like I cut off the tail. 
You could even add more tail feathers if you have another bird, a similar sister shot, which I'm guessing you do. You grab that portion of the tail and then paste that in there and massage that in Photoshop. So again, I'm giving you some basic examples of what to do with the image without a lot of post-processing. And then depending on your thoughts on post-processing and compositing, some ideas of where you could take it to. But again, doing it super quick, um, and I know it looks a little sloppy and imperfect because of that, but lots of images to get through in an hour. I hope that's helpful. If there are questions, um, feel free, you guys, unmute yourself on an individual basis or type me a note in the chat room. I don't mind answering questions at all. All right, Jan, are you on the call tonight? Okay, I'm not seeing her in the list. Um, so Jan, thank you for submitting. Um, um, I used to live in Michigan and see deer all the time, not that we don't have them in Arizona, but um, I saw them much more often in Michigan. So, the, and I know Jan is from Michigan, so um, thank you for sending this image from my hometown if you're watching the recording. So this little fawn is just adorable. And what I love about it, several things that I really, really like. First of all, um, I love the fact that the face and the ears, they're looking at me, I'm engaged. It's not like the ears are back or one ear is back. Um, she's looking at me or, or he, I guess it could be a he. Um, the face is in focus. A lot of times I see folks who take pictures of wildlife when there's other things in the picture and the camera accidentally focuses on, let's say, the thing just in front of the animal or the thing just behind it or the focus points lands on a shoulder or something that makes the eyes a little out of focus. Eyes are in focus and in wildlife, just about every situation that I know of, um, if the eyes aren't in focus, nothing else matters because if they're not in focus, the image is not good. Even if everything else about it is great, we can't connect with those eyes. They need to be in focus. So good job with that. Um, what I can see here is also I like your framing. So you've kind of framed it with, and I know it's just based on where the deer is standing, but uh, it's kind of poking around the corner. You've got nice framing with these bushes and things here. I really like that. Where I think you could take it up a level is to think about your composition with cropping. So on the left hand side here, I've got a lot of negative space and sometimes I really like negative space and sometimes it isn't maybe as helpful. So if I wanted to keep more negative space, I'm going to give you a couple of options. I could crop it and I'm going to pull this down a little bit. And you'll see these rules of thirds and I'm going to pull this over until we get this kind of right in that rule of thirds range. I don't want to completely cut off the rock or the framing, but right about in there is pretty close. And I could do something like that. And now I've got the deer in the left third. I'll put the crop lines back in, or excuse me, in the right third. And this is all serving as negative space. So you don't really pay as much attention to all this stuff over here, but it balances out all of these heavy things that are in this side of the image. And then this is still approximately in the rule of thirds. I'd love it if the eyes were specifically, but I don't really dislike it being just off that exact point. So that's one way to do it. The alternative way to do it, I'm going to try to bring back the full image there, is to crop, um, oh, my disks are full. Hold on here. Let me see if I can fix that. Um, oh, it figures my scratch stick is, I, I'm not, um, I'm on a machine that is not my normal full-time Photoshop machine and it's kind of full, so I apologize. Let me close a few uh, things out here and maybe that will help. Hopefully, hopefully, and I'll close um, this out and close. No, nope, that's already closed out. Okay, so we'll see if that will help at all with my cropping. No, okay, I'm going to draw instead. Hopefully that will work. So um, I'll draw on this image and I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. But if you cropped in a different way, let me grab some black, turn this at 100%, and hardness I'm gonna zoom up here if I were to crop like this and maybe take th this part of the image and then crop here if you can imagine you know get rid of all this over here and just focus on this part and I maybe didn't do it perfectly but you'll get the idea and then if I drew my rule of thirds in here and I'm gonna use um, white for that I guess for the moment I drew my rule of thirds 
in this image, maybe like this and so, and this, and I know it's not perfect, like this, then this dough again falls in the rule of thirds in the intersection at PowerPoint here, and then everything else serves as negative space. I probably in reality could have extended this just a little bit more, but I'm drawing right now and uh, with a mouse, which isn't always elegant, um, that would shift over that rule of thirds so that this line ends up being right in here. Uh, but anyhow, that could be another way to crop it. And so when I, I'm gonna get rid of all those things, and I just look at this, she's in the middle, right? If I drew a plus through this image, she's bullseye right in the middle. And subjects right in dead center can often, when you've got a rectangular shaped image, feel lost. And so cropping it either like so as one option or coming in the other way and cropping it, ooh, that's a terribly uneven line, doing something like that can just make your composition look better. And then in Photoshop, I might just kind of clean up this tree because it's a little bit of a distracting element. I might pull some other foliage in there and do that. But hopefully that is helpful. Um, anybody have any questions on that before I move on? All right, so let me ask this, if you guys can just type in a response. What's a takeaway that you've had so far that you've learned something about, um, something that really resonated with you so far tonight? can chat something in the chat window. All right, thanks Joel, keeping the eye in focus. Faye, rule of thirds, you've really hit on that tonight. Anybody have any other thoughts or things that are standing out? Hopefully some things have been helpful. Some of you might not uh, just, you might be just listening and not typing at the moment. So hopefully you guys are finding this helpful. Any questions so far? Okay, well, please type your thoughts and questions. I really do appreciate them. And it helps me know if I am actually helping you and not just sitting here talking for my own good. So anyway, I hope that, that, uh, that these things have been helpful so far. All right, here's another one. This sleeping fox is so sweet, isn't he? Oh, um, thank you for um, mentioning that, that you've been working on cropping a lot more lately and this has helped reinforce what you've been doing. I am glad about that. Um, that's really helpful. Um, let's see here. Uh, Faye, good reminders. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Keep your thoughts and comments coming as well as your questions. I don't mind those at all. Um, okay, so here's this fox. And first of all, just what an accomplishment to find a fox sleeping like this. Um, that is not easy. So hats off to just discovering him. Um, I would love to have that opportunity. So let's talk about what I like and what we can do more with this. So this image right now, and um, I'm, I'm uh, having a little bit of difficulty, like I said, with my Photoshop, with my uh, scratch just being full. So I may have very limited usage of it any longer and I do apologize for that, but we'll do our best here. So um, anyhow, with this image, what I've got here is this wonderful fox. She's got good light and contrast on him, right? Nice soft light. I don't see any harsh shadows in here that are distracting to me. I don't see bright hot spots where light has gotten too bright and there's no data. Um, that is all really good. And probably because she's an open shade in the woods on probably a cloudy day. So all of that is really a good thing. She's done a good job. It looks in focus to me. Great moment. Um, so that's what I love about it. What I think you could do, Jan, if you're watching after the facts, Oh, now it's letting me crop again, go figure, um, is I could go in probably tighter. And this will all depend on how much you may or may not have cropped already as to what your outcome will be with the size. But I think you could go in even more and or zoom in more if that was an option for you. You may have been at the limit of your camera. Um, let me just see what you had for your file info. Um, your focus length was at 600 millimeters, so you probably were at the end of that lens. Um, your exposure was one one hundredth of a second. 
F6.3 ISO 800. That's telling me it was a pretty dark area in there, one one hundredth of a second. I'm going to assume you were on a tripod. The fox was sleeping, so that's why you could get away with that. Normally, a fox in one one hundredth of a second, you just have a blurry fox. Um, so anyway, um, and looking at this here, image size, it looks like you didn't crop in a whole lot. So. Um, so I'm going to suggest perhaps doing it a little bit more, and then I'm going to make this bigger so you can all see it. Um, there is a lot of, um, you know, that, that information that I got rid of, I'll show you the before and then the uh, after. So again, before, after, it just tightened in my view of him. And I kind of cropped long and narrow as opposed to the original aspect ratio of your image. A few things you could do from here. Um, and again, I'm guessing on how much you might have cropped already. I'm trying to deconstruct it as best I can. But now that you're in here and in Photoshop, um, I could go in with a very soft brush and very subtle um, enhancements and I could play up a few of these highlights a little bit more in the ears. What we learned in our composition class, and we spent a lot more time on this, but your eye goes to the brightest things first and then the darkest things. And where there's points of high contrast, it loves that even more. So if I played that up just a little bit, it's going to just make that fox be something more compelling for me to look at. And I'm not as distracted by the background. And I'm not saying do it a lot, but a little bit can be a subtle difference. I could do a little on the tail and I'm just lightly doing this, all right? Not tons and tons. And sometimes I might like something, sometimes I don't, so I could take that away. I do like the, the light on the, the head here. But I could play up some of that detail so that I can see the dimensions of the fox even more. Similarly, I can go into my black. I'm doing this in a very soft brush at 10% opacity on an overlay layer. And I could darken these things in the background. I obviously can't get rid of all the sticks and we know he's nesting, you know, sleeping in his den. But if I got rid of some of those things that are lighter and I could even go in um, a couple of options, I could go into my burn tool and I could burn the highlights and just go in here and get rid of, I'm doing it with a super bright brush or a super heavy brush. I don't normally do it that heavy. I could go in on some of those really bright things here and there and just take down some of those highlights so they're not as distracting. White blobs usually take your eye away from things. So I could just get those darker. And that would tell me, yeah, this fox is in the woods and I know that, but I'm not so distracted by some of those white elements. So now what I've done, and I can go back to my white brush and pull up some highlight, whoops, pull up some highlights on that overlay layer. And I've got an image that just looks a little bit more interesting. So let's look at the before and after. Here's before I did the lightening and the darkening. So all I did was with a five to 10% opacity brush, lighten and darken. Okay, so see the difference of how my eye goes right to that fox and the other stuff is just supporting. And then this is the before where my eye goes to the fox, but then it's really distracted by the branches. So that's one thing I would do. The other thing, and this is all if you're open to some post-processing. The other thing I would do, these leaves are a little bit distracting to me. So I might want to consider getting rid of them. So I could just clone those out really quickly. And that might help just clean up the picture a little more as well. So anyway, those are my two cents on that. But if anybody has any more comments or thoughts on that, I'm open to it. But here is your begin. Actually, um, it was the uncropped version, which I've already cropped, so I can't show you that. But um, there is the original one that I cropped. And then there's with the treatment. And again, I'm doing it quickly. Um, I might be a little more subtle and take a little longer to do it if it was my real image, but hopefully that will help you, Jan. Um, here's another one here from her, this lovely little house sparrow, which I actually appreciate she shot a house sparrow. Most people don't think of those birds as very interesting, but if you really study them, they're interesting birds and beautifully colored. And the older the male, 
the more you will see the bib on their chest. You can tell the age of a male by uh, looking at the definition on the bib. Um, the younger males don't have as much. The older males are really well defined. This one's kind of somewhere in between. I love this little tuft of feathers here and that you got the detail and that it's sharp. And if I zoom in, your eye is, and I know this is a cropped version zoomed in now, your eye is pretty sharp. Um, so, and I think you've cropped this to some extent already, I'm guessing, but it, you know, it looks pretty sharp. Could be maybe a hair sharper. I think your focus was more over here and on a shallow depth of field, the eye was already a, just a touch, but it also could be due to some artifact from cropping because the bill looks pretty sharp. So I think we've, you've already cropped in a little bit and that's what I'm seeing. So I like the fact, I'm going to put my crop here and look at the, the rule of thirds. I like the fact that you have um, on this rule of thirds, let me get my brush tool really quickly so I can draw on this and show you something. Um, on the rule of thirds, you're pretty close to it with regard to where you included the top of the fence or picnic table or whatever this was um, with where the bird is. So I'm just going to draw the rule of thirds and it's not going to be perfect, but you'll get the idea. So this is probably about equal thirds. So the bird's right in the middle. We didn't put anything in a rule of third. It's actually right in the middle. What I like that you did with this is you chose to do it in just about an absolute square crop. So if I did this in a 12 by 12 ratio, there's a square crop. You're a little bit wider than square, um, but things that are right in the center tend to look better in a square crop than a rectangular crop most of the time. So you might even be able to tighten in a little bit on that crop and make it a square crop. I'm going to get rid of my rule of thirds for a minute. Tighten that in as a square crop. Things look better when they're in a square crop when they're in the center, but then I would bring this in and then tighten that up a little more with your square crop. So you can see then that this I don't know what it is, fence, picnic table, whatever, is right on that bottom third, and that might make it a little bit more interesting for you. Third thing that I would do, and I'm gonna go back to my, my overlay layer, although there's a bunch of different ways you could do this, is one of the main rules is that your eyes go to the brightest things first and then the darkest things. So you've got some nice contrast here in the bird, and I think my eye does go to the bird first. But see in this lower right-hand side how bright this is. My eye starts out here and it goes here and then it pulls instantly down here. And I feel like even though I want to stay here, this is always calling my name. So I would suggest darkening that just a little bit. And I'm using just an overlay layer. I'm going to say 10% and I'm going to try to pull, um, pull that down a little bit more. Maybe I need to brighten it even more or darken it. I'm, I mean, even more. I might need to do even more than that. When it gets too bright, sometimes there's not enough data there. So let me try burning the highlights and we'll see if we can make it happen that way. And it may or may not even pull down with that, but I am going to try. I'm still burning those highlights. Let me flatten this a minute. Try it again. Sometimes Photoshop acts up a little bit. That's a little better, but not exactly the look I wanted. I don't like it muddy like that. So what that's telling me is that there's probably no data down here, meaning if I took my dropper and I went and sampled down here, it's, pretty, it's still gray, but it's close to white. It might be gray from some of the, the things that I did to it already. So that's kind of bothering me a little bit. You could get away from the absolute square crop and get rid of some of that by cropping it this way or then cropping the bird this way. Now you've got a super tight crop, and I'm not necessarily a fan of cropping a picture to death. I'm speaking only to composition right now. That gets rid of some of that white. Or you could try some of the post-processing techniques to darken that, um, but you don't want to darken it and just have a muddy blob. So you may also need to think about going in with your clone tool and cloning in a little bit of that texture back down in here, just gently. And that could kind of help you out in a bind. So that's just a thought. I'm not doing that perfectly, but that's just a thought. And then you could further darken that as needed. And now you've got something where my eye isn't 
pulled down to that lower right hand side as much. And again, these are quick treatments. I would spend more time and be more professional about it, but um, that's a start for that. So thank you, Jan, for submitting those. I've got a couple more images here. Diane, welcome, and you are on the line. Would you like to unmute yourself and talk about this with me? Or do you want me to unmute you? I can unmute you really quickly. <laughs> hey, Diane, how Hi. are you? Hi. Uh, I'm okay. I can't <laughs> figure out how to use this. I'm all <laughs> Well, it looks to me like you did, and I hear you, and you're on oh. the line, and I've got your pictures. Oh, so, okay. Hey, we're, we're cooking with gas. Um, it's good to hear somebody else's voice other than my own, too. So, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, thanks for joining. Thanks for submitting this yeah. image. Um, pelicans uh, are one of my favorite you. birds, and I really enjoy this image, but do you want to tell me a little bit about it? Uh, well, I don't know. I was at, where did I take this? I took it at the zoo. <laughs> On a, I think I was on a photo shoot with uh, Cass, uh, Catherine. Uh, uh, with somebody. Levy. Okay. Yeah, and I was on a photo shoot at the uh, Phoenix Zoo. Oh, nice. And of course, I saw this image in my, you know, I was looking out there and I saw this, and that's mm -hmm. I just took a picture of it. It's probably uh, probably on automatic. <laughs> well, I can tell you what the settings were, even if it was automatic. I can Could have been my P900, too. <laughs> <laughs> so even on automatic, the camera still chooses settings for you. Yeah. Um, and so you were at 107 millimeters, meaning you were pretty fairly close to this bird. One sixteen hundredth of a second, which that tells me exactly why it looks so sharp, because your the exposure setting was high. Oh, okay. F5.0, which means you had a relatively shallow depth of field, which works for this image. Um, uh -huh. So nicely done here. What I love in this image is this, oh, let me get my pointer tool here. <laughs> I love that your eye is tech sharp and on a bird that is so easy, especially in Arizona when we have full sun, to overexpose. Mm -hmm. You did not overexpose these areas here. So if I took samples mm. of these, here's my paint tool. If I took samples, yeah. it's close, but you're not at 100% white, right? You're close, very uh -huh. close. In some cases, I know it's a white bird, but we still have detail. I can see detail in the feathers here. I can see detail here. I can still see detail here. That is really hard to do on a bright sunny day. And the fact that this image works so well is because I can see all of these feathers. It makes me want to touch them. <laughs> Right? I can yeah. also see the, the detail in the bill here with this flesh under the bill. And uh, this is breeding season and pelicans only get these horns on their bill uh, during breeding season. So this obviously oh. is during breeding season. I really like so much about this. So here's oh, another here. surprising thing that uh, people might be surprised about. So the edge of the head is, is cut off. And some people might say, oh, you cut off the head. But you know what? Uh, you know, right brain or left brain is what right. my <laughs> Right. Well, here's the thing. If, I, if you didn't cut off the head, I, and, and, and I, you could almost do it a little bit more, although I'd hate to lose that detail. This mm -hmm. unconventional kind of crop actually makes this work better. I think uh -huh. this is where it's it's my opinion versus anybody else's opinion. But yeah. otherwise, you know, you have the whole head, but you'd have space over here. And like, I feel like my eye would be like, we am we over here and now what do I do? Whereas it <laughs> sort of gets you tight into this image. It, it It's like a close feeling and it all keeps you contained right in here. That's my personal preference, but I don't mind that you did it. I actually like that you did it. So uh, I have a habit of cutting off little pieces here and there. Well, it might be a habit. It might be a style. It depends on yeah. how it's done. You know, it's yeah. just like with a people portrait. A lot of times you'll see the tops of the heads cut off strategically. It's called the unconventional crop, but it really makes things work. Yeah. If, if done well, you have to do it right. Um, there's a point where you do it not enough or too much or it's the wrong composition. But I like all of this. I love the detail here. Um, tack sharp, and I always look for that. So super yeah. well done. I might, now, I don't know what a big fan you are of Photoshop, um, but what I might do is go into my little overlay layer and this eye is so pretty, I wanna hmm. make it pop a little bit more. So I might go in and just lightly pull uh, this up a little yeah. bit more. And it's because I want to be able to get in there, I wanna connect yeah. with that eye. So I might pull that up a hair more and if I come back out, and I did it a little bit exaggerated just to give you a feel, yeah. but there's the before, yeah. there's the I, after. I have Photoshop, I just, it's too confusing. 
I have yeah, trouble using it. I understand. And, and there is a tool that I'm going to send. Uh, I can send everybody this link. There is a tool called MacFun, M-A-C-P-H-U-N. And I'll just mention it for anybody else. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of like my, it's my new found love. I really am enjoying this tool. Um, I'll oh. send you a link to save you 10 bucks off of it. It's only 65 bucks. I believe that's the price. And it's permanent. It's not like a monthly subscription. It is not as complicated as Photoshop. There's lots of cool presets and things you can do. With. You can do a ton with it. Um, and it's a standalone. You don't have to use it with Photoshop. The people who used to make Nick that's software cool. and others, um, have developed this, uh, from my understanding, they've done a really cool job. So that could be a tool and I'll, I'll include a link and a follow up so you guys can take a look at it. I think you can do a free trial of it and I, oh, I have a discount code for it for 10 bucks off. So that's always cool. Oh, okay. um, so back to this image, one thing that I might have you do if you want to try Photoshop is down here in the lower right hand side or left side, uh -huh. there's this um, uh, lily pad or I don't know, stem of something. It's, it's a little bit distracting for me, I think. But what you can do is go in with your healing brush or with the clone tool and we can get rid of it. So I'm gonna try yeah. it first with healing yeah. brush. And if it works, it works, uh, oh. it works like a dream. Oh, um, that worked. <laughs> whoops, there we go. Yeah, I'll get oh. rid of that. And you can kind of yeah. play with it a little bit. If it didn't mm -hmm. do it perfectly, go in there and touch up. But that no, now good. doesn't create a stumbling block for me. And I really like that. I might also get rid of those little feathers here. Even though I know they're reflections, they're a little bit distracting. Um, so I just kind of look for little distracting elements along the edge. But I think you've got a winning image here. Other than that, I wouldn't do a darn thing. I really, really enjoy this. No, oh, thank you very much. Really nicely done. Yeah. And, um, you know, if anybody else, uh, yeah, the detail in the white is impressive. Rose was saying that, and I agree. Oh. And um, oh. yeah, so um, so anyway, good. And uh, Don, thank you for your comments on the previous image as well. All right, Diane. Okay. Uh, whoops. Uh, hold on. I didn't mean to close that out. I meant to close this one out. Um, there we go. All right. So you've got this lion um, that is probably at the Desert Sonoran Museum uh, or at the zoo. Uh, no, I think it's at the Phoenix Zoo. Okay. So this lion, this um, uh, mountain lion, I really enjoy your composition a lot in this image. So I'm going to go back to that rule of thirds piece again for people. Mm -hmm. You've even kind of exaggerated a little bit, but the fact that you just didn't put the face in the middle, you've got the face, you know, the most interesting part of this image is in this upper PowerPoint area. I really like that. And again, you did this unconventional yeah. crop thing where you kind of cropped into the forehead and I'm a fan of that. I really like, I, I am. So you may be one of those people who see compositions and get it without really knowing why you're doing it. It's kind of like, I, people who learn I think you're make. right about that. I, I think so. I and see, it, I see things. I, and I see things all over and yes. I just, and I just, you know, that's it. That's the and, picture. And, <laughs> yep, exactly. And some people are gifted like that yeah. and others have to understand more about it and then they can equally do a wonderful job. It's like, you know, my background is in educational psychology before I moved to photography. Some people pick up reading and figure out the phonics code without ever explicitly being taught it. Others need to be taught that short A sounds like this and, you know, and so on and so forth. Different people acquire knowledge in different ways. I like that you're doing what you're doing here. So I wouldn't okay. change that at all. Now, did you do any treatment to this or were you shooting with, I, I'm trying to figure out how you got this very light, faded, muted kind of uh, blur around it. There was probably bars in front of it. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> there was probably bars or cage, something was in front of it. A cage or something. I yeah. was wondering about that because you can yeah. actually use those elements when you're shooting at a zoo to your advantage. And I think you did so in this case. It almost created kind of a vignette around yeah. the lion. And, and I liked that piece. So to, yeah. for, for me, that kind of works. You might be able to soften it a little bit more in here. This, this is a little bit dark. I don't know if I if I like it or not. I'm I'm on the fence about it. One thing I do like is that it does make this um, this contrast of the whiskers really pop. So you know I don't know I don't know if I do a whole lot to it. You may want to consider, and I'm I'm gonna try it because I'm a big fan of trying it, and sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Going in with these eyes, 
Mm -hmm. And what if we could pull up the eyes a little bit more? Just make them, right? The eyes of a lion are so darn compelling. What if we could just mm -hmm. make them pop a hair more? Maybe even, I don't want to do it too much. Um, yeah. Just a little bit in there. Hey, puppy dog. Um, you know, and I'll try the same over That's here. And even a little bit around the... Um, the lower eye just to make some of this a hair more contrasty and maybe a little bit right in there let's see what we got when we pull it out so there's the before oh okay there's the after and again no, like i'm doing it quick you yeah. like the after yeah i like the after i like it and again mm -hmm. i did it quick i might do it a little more with a soft hand and spend a little more time yeah. on it oh, but that looks nice. it's the idea pulls my eyes a little bit more into his eyes or her eyes and allows me to engage <clears throat> that's mm -hmm. just a thought and you know you can play around with it a little bit more and see what you like but i adore your composition on this and i think you did a brilliant job of shooting through wires if you got this kind of an image yeah. I think it's really <laughs> i'd you. also be very very curious to see what this would look like in a black and white. So if I went oh, to uh, um, change it there, yeah, yes, black and white, and then mm -hmm. you can play with the sliders, the filters. Yes, yeah. I think I, I do that with Picasso. <laughs> yes, okay. I, I do the contrast and the lighting. Yeah, and I would play with this a little bit more, but I think that one. I like the color. I like the black and white, mm -hmm. possibly even more. So that's no, my uh, two cents on that one, but. Okay. Uh, but yeah, well done. Good job. And, and do you have any questions or anything? And I see Rose has a question as well. So oh, okay. uh, first, Diane, do you have any questions? Uh, no, no. I appreciate what you're saying about it. Okay. I'm going to mute you, Diane, for a minute. And then yeah. um, if I'll see if others have questions. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Oh, good question. So Rose, is that a Fibonacci composition? You know, it really has the potential to be one. I can see that in here. Um, if I, and I don't have a Fibonacci overlay to do this perfectly, but if I kind of took the golden spiral, oops, let me do a higher contrast thing here. I could take kind of the golden spiral and I could see that playing out through here. Um, yeah, I could see some of that. I could I could design a, a Fibonacci overlay and see if that would work. And if you haven't learned about Fibonacci or golden spirals or composition, um, I touched on that in my composition class, and I could teach a whole class just on Fibonacci. But um, but anyway, really interesting question. And I agree with you. I think that is why it's so compelling. The composition is just very striking in this and the fact that all of these things around the edges are blurred and this part is sharp and the color is more dominant and strong and contrasty here than anywhere else in the image really draws me in and i just adore the way diane cropped this you know yeah she could have left more of the head in but it would have completely changed it this is all about the face and i mean i just get this just emotional response to that image i, I really really like it um and then someone said, hold on here, let me get rid of this. Um, draw the curve from the other eye and down the body. So from here, you're thinking from this and like into this. Yeah, you could potentially do that too, because it also brings in this eye as well. Very interesting. All right. Yeah, you did shoot close, but I like it, Diane. I really like it. All right, it is the top of the hour, and believe it or not, I got through all the images, which is amazing. So uh, actually, it's top of the hour plus 10 minutes. You got a freebie of more 10 minutes. But I hope this has been helpful for everyone. Do you want to type me a couple quick notes and tell me what resonated the most, what you learned the most from tonight, whether or not you submitted an image? And while I'm looking for some responses from folks, I'll just mention that I will follow up with a recording of this session, uh, likely tomorrow, it takes a little while to render. So I'll email you that as well. I'll post it in the Photography as a Journey group. This is a free session, so anybody can join. And uh, I will try to do one of these once a month. Um, meanwhile, um, Milani or Melanie, depending on how you say it, you learned about the Fibonacci composition. Yes, excellent. And there's so much more you can learn about that. Um, I should do a webinar on that one of these days soon. 
Pam, the small adjustments make the photos. They do. I am not a heavy-handed Photoshopper, but little tweaks can really get your people's eye who are viewing the images to where you want them to go. Um, thank you, Diane, for, about what I'm doing in the Photoshop. And uh, what was the name of the Mac thing? I'm going to email everybody with a link to a discount code. It's called MacFun, M-A-C-P-H-U-N, but I will email you with a discount code as well. Um, Oh, good. Samantha. Um, oh, yeah, the perfectly round catch lights and the, the photo contest. And yes, on overcast days, you'll get more of the reflection. Um, and yes, on harsh light, you will typically have a small, almost perfectly round catch light. But usually on those days, I can tell the difference in the image and the way the image is lit. But when I see kind of a dark gray blah image, not to say that the ones submitted were like that today, but um, I, and then all of a sudden I see this white dot of a catch light. I'm like, I know that that was an add-on. That wasn't originally how the light looked and reflected in that eye. So um, Suzanne, I'm glad. Samantha, everybody, I'm really glad, Rose, that this was helpful for you. And is Mac fun only for Macs? It used to be, but they just launched a PC version this fall. And uh, there'll be more things added to it in the near future, but I'll send you that discount code. Um, other than that, I will let you go for tonight. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope it was helpful, and I hope to see you on future sessions. Uh, I welcome your feedback and ideas for future ones. So anyway, thanks so much. Have a wonderful evening, and I will talk to you soon. Take good care and happy shooting, everyone. Bye-bye.